Spanish police say they believe that the body of a man shot dead in the garage of an apartment building in Alcante is that of a Russian pilot who defected to Ukraine in his helicopter last year. He was found dead last week in the Spanish resort where he's believed to have been living. Maxim Kuzminov, excuse me there, had said that the opposition to the war is what made him leave Russia. He reportedly also received around half a million dollars to do so. The garage of an apartment building in Alicante, where the body of a man was discovered, riddled with bullet holes and run over by a vehicle. Local police at first thought it was a Ukrainian citizen, but now believe it could be the body of Russian helicopter pilot Maxim Kuzminov. I want to clarify that it's a case under investigation, so we can't provide more information yet. We have to wait for the police to do their work so the investigation can progress. No suspects have been identified. Kuzminov defected to Ukraine last year in a complex operation with their intelligence. It was seen as a coup for Ukraine, but it also made him a target for the Kremlin. Last August, Kuzminov was supposed to be flying a Russian military helicopter to transfer parts for fighter jets. Instead, he flew across enemy lines and landed in Ukraine. His two fellow pilots were killed. Ukrainian intelligence released this footage of what they say is the helicopter Kuzminov used to fly to Ukraine and an interview with him explaining why he chose to leave. Murder, tears, blood, people just killing each other. That's the thing I don't understand, and what I didn't want. Kuzminov moved to Spain from Ukraine. The Kremlin says it has no information about the case. But, according to Russian state news agency TASS, foreign intelligence had already branded Kuzminov a moral corpse for defecting. Joining me now is investigative journalist Andrei Soldatov. He's the founder and editor of the Agentura website, which tracks Russia's intelligence services. Mr Soldatov, does the killing of Maxim Kuzminov bear the hallmarks of, of the Russian intelligence services? Uh, yes, unfortunately it does. Uh, and actually, uh, even before that happened, we had indications from the Russian military intelligence that they, uh, they're going to uh, find him and kill him. Uh, so it is uh, a very symbolic thing for the Russian military intelligence. Yeah, I mean, we um, we saw today the Russian news agency TASS quoted the head of Russia's foreign intelligence services as calling Kuzminov a traitor who became a moral corpse as soon as he started planning his defection. So that's as close as we're going to get to an official Russian admission that they c uh, killed Kuzminov. Uh, yes, absolutely. But given the uh, the history of uh, the Russian intelligence agencies going after defectors. Uh, it's unfortunately, it reflects a broader picture that uh, while Russian intelligence agencies are always trying to make a point that they can get to you whenever you are. Mm -hmm. So have you seen an upswing in the activities of the Russian intelligence services since the, the start of the Ukraine war? Well, yes. Uh, unfortunately, uh, well, as a Russian intelligence and special forces, uh, they as we know, uh, they felt confused and embarrassed at the beginning of the war, especially in the spring of 2022. But by 2023, they regrouped. They found a new sense of purpose. Now they think they are not in a war with Ukraine anymore. They are in a war with, uh, with the West. And basically, they think that we are in the third round of this war. The first round was in the 1930s and 40s, and they believe they won this round with all these uh, famous... Soviet illegals and spies, they lost the second round, which which was a cold war. So now we are entering the uh, the third round, and they're quite well determined to win this one. Can you explain to us how all of this works? I mean, are these Russian agents or are they um, hired killers? Um, and, and can I ask you, do you have the impression that Western intelligence agencies are on top of all of this? Yes, I, yes, I think uh, there, there is a sense of um, some arrogance towards Russian intelligence agencies, especially because uh, so many of Russian spies were caught red-handed uh, in, uh, in the late 2010s. 
Uh, remember the case of Skripal, two guys who are identified. Uh, we know their names. Uh, we also know lots of names of uh, Russian spies thanks to uh, the activities of groups like Bellingcat. So lots of Russian spies get exposed. So we got this strange impression that these means they are absolutely incompetent and unprofessional. They could be not extremely competent, but to kill people abroad, you don't need to be that competent. What also is important is that uh, the Russian security services, uh, they adopted to the new reality after the war started, which means that lots of Russian spies were expelled from uh, embassies uh, all over Europe. And they're quite inventive. Now they use foreign nationals in their operations, I mean, in, in, uh, in assassinations and exfiltrations. We already have an, uh, an operation in Italy when a Russian national was saved from the court. Uh, he was actually transferred back to Russia with the help of a gang of uh, uh, Serbian criminals. We also have several Bulgarians who were arrested in London because they were working for the Russian intelligence agencies. So agencies are getting more inventive and more resourceful. Can I ask you about the timing of this? Do you see any connection between the timing of the Kuzminov killing and the death of Alexei Navalny? No, I don't think that there is an immediate connection. The thing is that uh, for the Russian intelligence agencies and for the army to kill a defector is a very important thing. It is because uh, uh, Russian and Soviet intelligence agencies produced uh, a disproportionately large amount of defectors during the Cold War and after that. So for them to find and kill someone who decided to defect is a, it's a very important thing because we need to prevent the others from doing the same thing. So it was quite important for them from the day one to find this pilot. OK. And looking at the bigger picture, I mean, does this prove that Vladimir Putin can basically do what he wants with impunity both at home and abroad? Well, what we have now in the country is that people are extremely afraid and the climate of repression uh, is, is horrible. You cannot go to the streets to protest. You cannot actually express your opinion. You should be extremely cautious of what, kind of say, uh, what, what you say in public. Abroad, we already see a lot of attacks targeting Russian exiles, including in Europe. Uh, unfortunately, we have some incidents in Austria, in Germany, in Italy, now in Spain. So it looks like Vladimir Putin's agencies are getting more and more aggressive uh, and adventurous. Russian investigative journalist Andrei Zoldatov, thank you so much for your time for speaking to us on DW. Thank you.